Hello again and welcome to the Bex EDM YouTube channel. So I wanted to show some progress on my MK2 wire EDM machine, but I've been waiting for ages to get parts from Misumi and they're still not in, so uh, no progress about the wire EDM machine today. However, I have been working on something very exciting, something very new, and I've been working on it for quite a while now, and it's time for me to show you what I'm uh, planning to do. So, I've been getting quite a few emails with questions about um, EDM machining and um, of course I've given a lot of wire EDM examples but um, yeah, people are asking me whether or not the BX17 arc generator can be used for die syncing EDM as well um, which of course it can because the, the EDM process, you know, the arc that cuts the metal works the same whether or not the, the electrode is wire or a fixed electrode. Um, however, in order to show that the PX17 is perfectly capable of die syncing, I want to uh, to build a demonstration so uh, I can show how it works. Now, I basically have two options in order to uh, to make such a setup. First is I could um, make a Die syncing EDM machine from scratch, and um, yeah, basically show that it works combined with the BX17 arc generator. Another approach would be to buy an existing industrial die syncing EDM machine, maybe even broken so that it's cheap, and then retrofit the whole thing, um, and then yeah, bring it back to life, but then with modern technology with the BEX EDM arc generator and some kind of uh, new CNC control. Um, so you might have noticed that my uh, number of subscribers of this channel has passed 1000, which is really good. Well, it's not, it's not a lot uh, compared to other channels, but um, yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that. Um, so given this milestone, I thought it would be nice to celebrate it. Uh, celebrate it in a big way. So, I have actually ordered an industrial EDM machine. Really exciting. It's an um, Charmil. It's an um, Swiss machine. It's a Charmil Eleroda A110. Well, the machine is not in yet. It is in transit and I'm expecting it very soon. Um, so the first thing that I need to do is to make room in my shop for this thing, because it's quite big. So I ordered a new workbench, or an additional workbench, for um, specifically for the uh, Charmil Eleroda machine. It weighs 700 kilograms, so you need quite a heavy workbench. And the workbench and the Eleroda machine will um, arrive this week. So uh, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, in the next YouTube video, you'll see me uh, unpacking the crates and uh, assembling the machine and see if it even works. So I've made the, um, the room in my shop so I can receive the machine and uh, yeah, I can start retrofitting it. But somehow I need to prepare for its reception that I was that is what I was thinking. Um, so I want to retrofit this machine. I want to retrofit it with uh, the Bex EDM BX17 art generator and some kind of CNC control. Now, um, as you've seen, my wire EDM machine uses the Dynamotion CNC control, which is a really fancy um, and nice solution. I, th I think it's still the best solution out there for multi-axis control. However, it is quite expensive. So uh, a die syncing machine only has a single axis. So buying the entire Dynamotion CNC control solution for just a single ax uh, axis is a bit overkill. So I've been looking around to see what other options there are and I couldn't find any. So instead, I decided to make my own Bex EDM CNC die syncing controller for single axis control, which is what I've been working on for quite some time now. So let's have a look at um, yeah, how it works. 
Okay, so here's the first early version of the user interface for the Bex EDM die syncing CNC control. It has uh, several tabs. First tab is for uh, control and overview. So on this tab you operate the machine. Um, you operate the cutting process specifically. There's also a tab for peripheral control, really simple, turning pumps on and off. A tab for uh, setting the connection to the CNC controller. The settings tab, um, this is not finished yet. It will hold all the settings that uh, determine the um, dynamic properties of the cut and things like that, and the user preferences. And then a live oscilloscope trace of the uh, control voltage. Now, the, uh, the first tab uh, it's, uh, consists of four sections. The first is a DRO um, of the position and of the machine state. So here you can see the actual position. Um, this will hold the target position, so the depth. And on this DRO you can see what the actual arc um, control voltage is. And here you can see the state of the machine. Next section is the uh, flush cycle configuration. So here you can select what kind of flushing you want. For instance, uh, for die syncing, uh, you want the, um, the RAM with the die to go up and down in order to uh, clear the cut. Um, or for EDM drilling, um, you do not cycle up and down, but you just drill down in one go because you have good flushing coming from the electrode itself. For um, die syncing, you can select uh, the cycle time you want in seconds, so um, how long you want the RAM to machine. And then after the cycle of 3.6 seconds, the RAM goes up, and then you can select how long it should wait for flushing. And um, then you can select whether or not it should retract to the starting position, or it should retract to a certain height above the cut that it has just made. And the height can be selected here, uh, which you can simply enter a number, for instance, uh, 10 millimeters above the, um, above the uh, previous cut. You can also use uh, drilling up and down um, or home the machine so that it will find <coughs> its, uh, <coughs> so that it will find its zero position. It does that by using the edge find uh, function of the BX17 arc generator. And after you have selected your uh, after you have selected your depth of cut and things like that, you can simply press start and the machine will start cutting, cutting and um, uh, it will cycle up and down and make cuts until it reaches the target depth and then it shuts down by itself. Now you can uh, prematurely stop the process or you can pause it. That's the uh, yeah that's the basics of the Bex EDM die syncing uh, CNC controller. This is just the initial version. However, it's already working. So uh, it still needs a lot of refinements, but uh, yeah, I, now you get the idea what I'm, uh, what I'm aiming for here. So of course I made this CNC controller, but um, I was not able to test it yet because my machine is not in. So I needed a simple test setup uh, in order to test my CNC controller. So what I did is I actually built my own die syncing machine as simple as possible. So the setup is not intended to do any kind of um, parts production or things like that. It's um, basically only built to explore the die syncing process and to allow me to uh, tweak and test my custom designed CNC controller. So let's have a look at the setup that I built specifically for the CNC uh, testing. So here's the uh, die syncing test setup. My die is actually a simple 9mm diameter solid copper uh, rod that I can um, use to sink into a workpiece. Now currently the uh, workpiece is just a chunk of stainless steel. 
I quickly whipped this setup together with the help of these uh, aluminum extrusions. I still had a bunch left over, so I thought I would reuse them. Now, this uh, spindle, um, that's uh, a purchase from eBay. The whole assembly with the ball screw, the stepper driver, uh, the linear bearing, everything. Uh, that was just a single assembly that I bought. It was uh, uh, around $120, $150 maybe, can't quite remember, but it was actually quite cheap. So uh, here's the, uh, yeah, that's the spindle. I printed, I 3D printed the um, plastic block uh, that I mounted onto it because the electrode needs to be isolated. And in the block I simply mounted the copper uh, tube, which is my electrode. So below the frame there's a water filter, which is uh, actually already quite dirty. Um, because new, when new they are white inside. And I used uh, a, um, a water tub, which is basically just a plastic tub from IKEA. <laughs> really simple setup. And I made a drain in the uh, water tub. And below the tub there is a uh, salvaged pump from a dishwashing machine. So this sucks in the dirty water and uh, pushes it through the filter and then it goes back to the workpiece where it is used to flush. Here you can see uh, the flushing nozzle. So let me turn it on. So now the pump is on and I made a small nozzle to get a a good flushing jet. That's how it works. So the uh, workpiece and electrode are connected by a high frequency twisted Litsa power cable to the uh, BX17 arc generator and uh, also connected to the uh, workpiece and electrode are the sense cables. So here's a sense wire and there's a sense wire. If you want to know what this is all about, you can check the manual of the PX17 arc generator. And I have a big box here, which is 5% uh, filled with electronics, the rest is air. But inside here is the prototype of the Bex EDM die syncing CNC controller, which um, yeah, I made and I'm now testing on this super cute and tiny test setup. Because when the big machine arrives, the industrial machine, I want to use this electronics, these electronics to um, retrofit the, uh, the die sinking machine. And uh, yeah, this simple setup uh, allows me to uh, yeah to test if my electronics are working correctly, if the software is. Uh, working as, uh, as expected, so it's really nice. Now, this setup, although it's very simple and um, it's, yeah, it's, it's quite easy to make, I basically made this in uh, not, not even two days, less than two days I built the whole setup because this assembly is, uh, yeah, is you can purchase it ready-made from eBay. Now, this setup is, uh, you can do die syncing machine with it um, but if you want to do quality parts, um, then this setup needs a lot of improvements. First, um, the filtering. The filtering is uh, it's just a single water filter. And um, this filter quickly uh, is exhausted. Because there's a lot of, um, especially with die sinking, you get a lot of uh, um, crap coming from the cut which quickly uh, saturates the filter. For instance, in my wire EDM machine, I use a gigantic industrial filter and then two water filters in series. And this works nice for wire EDM, so you, you somehow need uh, a lot bigger filter capacity than this little uh, rig currently has. Also, you might notice that I am actually doing die sinking with water. And there are no industrial machines that use water. All machines use special EDM die sinking oil. And uh, die sinking oil gives a lot of um, better properties to the cut, better surface finish and things like that. But I did not have um, the oil 
and I had water filters and a dishwashing pump. I had them already lying around. Um, so I was really I was uh, able to really quickly build this setup without uh, having to purchase a lot of other stuff, which I would have had if I would have used oil instead. So this is now water. It's not optimal, but it's already working quite nice. Um, so as you can see, the um, the workpiece rests on a stainless steel plate, and the stainless steel is just. Uh, it's just dropped in on the bottom of the IKEA tank. Now, uh, if you see, if you look at this from accuracy point of view, that's really bad, right? Because the um, uh, the, the positioning of the workpiece rests on the plastic bottom of a tub, which is accuracy-wise a nightmare. But this machine is not made to make really accurate parts. It's only made to verify the controller and to verify the, the, the process and things like that. So if you are if you want to build your own EDM machine, you somehow need to make a, um, a bottom of your tank that is uh, electrically isolated from the frame and uh, that needs to be really stiff and really sturdy. So not like this, but uh, something else. Uh, you need, a, for instance, a thick stainless steel plate which is connected via, uh, via ceramic standoffs or something, something isolating and stiff to the frame. That would work a lot better because now yeah, the accuracy is affected. What's also not recommended, if you use a simple frame like this and you use stepper motors, then stepper motors induce vibrations. Vibrations travel down the frame and eventually they reach into your workpiece and cut. So um, the accuracy is affected by the vibrations. Not only the vibrations from the stepper motor, but also the vibrations from the dishwashing motor here. So you need to isolate those vibrations if you're going to make a professional setup. But then again, I'm able to make really nice cuts. Not super accurate because of uh, the points that I just mentioned, but I can demonstrate the process and uh, yeah, I'm actually quite happy with this. Um, so the results from this setup gave me the confidence to, um, to do the retrofit of the industrial machine with my own CNC controller. Now let's, uh, let's do some cutting so you can see how it works. So this is how to start the cut. Um, I turn on the pump, so the water is uh, flushing, really nice, and uh, put the workpiece below the electrode, position the water, so like this, and then I go to my uh, CNC control. And with the user interface of the control I can um, jog the motor up and down, like so. So now it's sort of above the workpiece, almost there. Then I can press the, uh, the home button to uh, find the zero uh, position, so that the machine knows um, how far the workpiece is above the, uh, above the cut. And I can select all sorts of uh, parameters. So uh, right now I've selected a flushing time of uh, 3 seconds and uh, no flush pause so it goes up and directly down and the retract height is uh, 0 0.5 above the uh, original cut. So I can select any height that I want. And then when I'm done I press start, the big start button and then uh, the machine starts working. So let's have a look at how the electrode sinks down.
here's the uh, result. You can see I made a few attempts. The deepest one on the right side, that's the one uh, you saw me machining in the video. It's about uh, 1.5 millimeter deep and uh, took about five minutes to, uh, to machine. Well, these uh, flushing conditions were not optimal. Also, the arc generator has not been set to the max power yet. It was just a test cut, but already quite good results. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. So uh, there are a lot of videos coming up about the uh, retrofit of the industrial Charmiel Ileroda machine. So there's a lot of cool content coming up. So next to the retrofit, um, Oh, of course, I also still need to uh, finish my MK2 design of my wire EDM machine. So uh, a lot of interesting content still uh, to work on for me and uh, for you to watch. So I hope you liked the video and uh, subscribe to the channel and see you next time.